Todd, why don't you tell us about um, the use and importance of accessories and, and how to properly hold the, the bassoon and how some of those uh, accessories can help or maybe hinder uh, our ability to, to hold it properly. Absolutely. I, I know that particularly uh, in, in Texas, some of the programs start folks on bassoon as early as fifth grade, which can work. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of starting students on the bassoon uh, and switching people over to the bassoon. And uh, something that a lot of the fifth and sixth graders are most frankly terrified of at first is they're afraid they're going to drop the instrument, uh, particularly when they're trying to get situated with a seat strap. Um, so if I locate my seat strap here, that'll help. I'm going to move my camera back so I can show the method that I use uh, to show uh, beginners who are not comfortable holding the instrument in one hand. Um, most bassoonists, when playing seated, use the seat strap, which connects to the uh, to the cup at the bottom of the boot joint. Um, and some bassoonists also will use, uh, while seated, a, a neck strap that goes along with that. Uh, but let me let me move this here, and I will see if I can, without losing my my headphones, uh, demonstrate how how I show the younger folks how to set this across. Now, different method books will show you uh, that you should have the seat strap across the front of the chair, and others will show you uh, to have the seat strap across diagonally across the chair. Quite honestly, where you need to have it, uh, regardless of who you are, uh, it needs to be at a place where you don't feel like the strap is going to slide away. And sometimes with the, uh, the younger students, having, um, having it diagonally across the back gives them a little bit more hip and weight across the strap to hold it. If you weigh 75 pounds, counterbalancing that um, can be important. Uh, that being said, I think of all the woodwinds, if you're using your seat strap correctly, it can be the lightest instrument to hold uh, in your hands when you're playing, even compared to the flute or the clarinet, because... Um, I teach folks to sit in the chair so that their right hand, uh, so that their right side leg reaches just a little bit over the chair. So instead of having the instrument with the seat strap uh, leaning against the side of the chair, it's up against your leg because you can use that as a lever. I'm going to set this down for a second. The way that I normally do this is I will reach around my back with my left hand to put the seat strap down. Fifth graders and sixth graders sometimes have a hard time with that. So instead what they can do is hold the instrument with two hands and just draw their little line across. I'll demonstrate that real quick. Can you still hear me okay if I do it this way? Now here I have the bassoon up against my uh, right thigh. And if I feel like there's a lot of weight on my left hand, um, well, I don't want that. It's uncomfortable. It'll slow down my technique. And as I get older and I start practicing more, um, I can end up having some wrist injury as a result of holding a lot of weight in the left hand. And I don't need to do that because I can move my right knee ever so slightly to my right, as long as it's rested up against my leg. And that will work as a lever to take weight off of my hand. And you, as you can see now, don't have your students do this, I can comfortably hold the weight of the bassoon in my left hand with just my pinky finger. And that, uh, that takes care of um, most of the weight in the hand, hand there. So I have tiny hands. My seventh grader has bigger hands than I do. So I don't have a problem getting my right hand or left hand around uh, the bassoon and have a lot of finger left over here. For that matter, uh, when I was a little bit smaller, the, um, the thumb crutch uh, or the crutch here on the right side of the bassoon on the boot um, has a little post here that most bassoons are mounted with. I actually had my band director take that off when I was younger because it would rub up against the side of my hand. And so he used a little jeweler screwdriver, put it in the Ziploc and saved it in his desk for the next person. If you do have larger hands, then you can use the crutch, and this is off of a student bassoon I have over here. It doesn't fit on my heckle, but this will fit in. And for people with larger hands, this can add a lot of comfort 
just a little bit of support in the right hand to allow them to uh, not only have good placement with the bassoon, but just to provide a little bit of extra support. It helps keep a nice relaxed C shape in the hand that's important for good technique and for hand health. Um, there are also, and I think that Jake, you mentioned this uh, before, uh, before, the, uh, uh, before the seminar here, that uh, do you use the My Grip, the gel yeah. for the left hand yep. part of the bassoon? And I do, that yeah. uh, it's uh, silicone and that can be available as well. I have a little bit of the weight of the bassoon that rests just on the inside, interior part of the first knuckle on my index finger. Some of the weight is here, uh, but for some people that's uncomfortable. Now, again, most of my weight is on my right leg, but a little bit of it is here and you can get uh, the my grip silicone uh, that you can rest here. So most of us in band will be playing sitting down. If you want to add a strap, you can do that. Um, when playing standing up, obviously the seat strap is not going to work for me. Uh, so I do use a neck strap when I'm playing uh, concerti or solo pieces. I'll be doing a concertante here in a couple of weeks where I've been practicing with my neck strap. However, uh, the center of gravity on the bassoon is a little bit problematic with the neck strap in that uh, the, uh, it tends to want to, uh, the top part is heavy and it wants to rock forward. So there have been wonderful advances in balance hangers in the last several years. So instead of having to drill one like mine, I can insert and drill um, the a hanger that goes up here so I can find the perfect center of gravity for me on my bassoon and hook in here. However, there's some clamp. Do you remember, Lynn, who makes the, the ones that clamp on that you don't have to drill? Um, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's out there. That's a Google search for somebody. Um, yeah. But if you have a student who's going to be performing standing up, that might be a good investment for a program to have one balance hanger that you can attach here. It takes a lot of the weight off the left hand when standing and can make it much easier. Um, but again, for most students, just getting them comfortable with sitting with their right leg just hanging over the chair a little bit on the right hand side. Um, I find that students frequently will put the strap too far back and then they have the bassoon at a really high angle, which makes for weird intonation and funny sounds and blatting and all the things that Lynn and I were talking about earlier today. And uh, having the uh, strap that's far enough forward so you get an appropriate angle and weight on the left hand leg and it can make for a really happy bassoonist with a healthy left wrist and good technique. Great. Excellent. Thank you, Todd. Anything to add, Lynn? Probably about the only thing I might add is uh, my hands were fairly small when I first started. So in place of an actual crutch, I reversed my the low key guard. E key guard. So normally this guard is actually 180. So it's coming over this key rather than the way that it is now. And it makes a beautiful mini crutch. So if you have kids whose hands are not quite big enough to have a really, you know, like they, they can't actually play like this yet, but they can play like this, that might be a good solution. And it's free. Great. We like free. That's great. <laughs> Absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Oh, uh, next. One, Go ahead. Sorry. One more small point. Um, I loved that Todd mentioned the right side of the chair. Um, I completely agree on this. Your kids will never look like they are square, absolute center of their chair. They shouldn't look like they are centered in their chair. Mm -hmm. If they do, they'll probably have some balance issues with holding up the instrument. They may even have limited, limited left hand technique. So definitely a right hand orientation for your kids. I loved the contact with the right thigh. It's so nice to to be able to concur with someone that you don't know that well. <laughs> Yay! Um, and their kid, your your kids will, they'll be reading music over the instrument, always over the instrument. I still okay. see some poor kids. They should not share a stand. If they share a music stand, they're always going to be doing this, mm -hmm. and they're going to be trying to eyeball that shared stand that's to their left. So they always read music over their right. They should have their own stand. And if at all possible, a little bit of extra leeway on their right side, because that music stand is going to be a little bit to the right of their chair. It will not be dead center in front of their chair. 
it's a big thing. I had an eighth grade band director who was all about how things, he wanted it to sound fantastic, but he also wanted it to look amazing. And so all of us were perched right up on the edge of our chair, which was not great for seat strap people. And um, a lot of us were uh, artificially stretching and mm. straining our wind columns because he wanted us to be so high. And he got a great sound out of the band, but it was not good for, for posture for a lot of the saxophones and me, the single bassoonist. So yes, definitely a right side of the chair orientation for your young bassoonists.